Hello everyone, I'm Tings from Dongsheng Collective, and we're back with news on China after a pause last week because of the Dragon Boat Festival, which, of course, is one of the main holidays for Chinese people everywhere, with boat races and lots of good food. But let's get to the stories of the week. Alibaba Cloud is preparing for an important event next year. The company will be the host of the live broadcast of the 2024 Olympics, which will take place in Paris. In 2017, China's Alibaba Cloud beat Amazon in the bid to be the Olympic Committee's official cloud service provider. Since then, it has supported the Tokyo Olympics in 2020 and the Winter Olympics in Beijing last year. And for the first time in history, the games will be broadcast via the cloud rather than through satellite. The agreement with the International Olympic Committee also includes big data analytics, logistical support, and sensorless monitoring of athletes' on-field performance. So what is sensorless monitoring? Well, it's done with a technology known as 3D athlete tracking, which was developed by Intel and Alibaba Cloud and basically collects biomechanical data from athletes through AI-powered cameras. The event also represents a breakthrough for China in the context of growing sanctions led by the U.S. government against the Chinese technology industry. France's own National Cybersecurity Agency even tried to get the IOC to back out of the partnership. Given that the next Olympics will be hosted by the U.S. in Los Angeles in 2028, Alibaba Cloud is hoping for a successful run in Paris to try to reduce the pressure that the United States will certainly put on this partnership. Geopolitics aside, the company's founder Wang Jian said next year's event could be an opportunity to make cloud a standard technology. He even compared the next Olympics with the Chicago World's Fair in 1893 when Nikola Tesla used electricity to light up the event and practically ushered in the modern era of energy. So things aren't looking so good for Taiwan's regional leader, Tsai Ing-wen. Tsai's popularity has dropped to its lowest level in four years, with her disapproval rating going up from 37 to 48.2% just this past month. Among the reasons are a series of Me Too sexual harassment scandals of leaders of her party, the Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, including her senior advisor, Yan Zhifa. And the second reason for Tsai's declining support was her appointment of four judges to Taiwan's constitutional court. All of the judges are close to her party, and therefore the decision was seen as a way to transform the court into a pro-DPP organization. It remains to be seen whether this drop in the leader's popularity could impact her party's performance in the upcoming regional and legislative elections to be held in January. Remember that this past December, the KMT, which upholds the One China Principle, defeated the DPP in mayoral and county elections and today governs the island's main cities. The world's largest hybrid solar and hydroelectric power plant started operating in the province of Sichuan. The plant, called Kela, is located on the Yalong River in the Tibetan Plateau and is capable of producing 2 billion kilowatt hours per year. That's enough energy to power 700,000 homes. Kela is part of a gigantic 1,500 kilometer long river project that aims to generate electricity for 100 million homes in the future. And it works like this. The electricity generated by the solar plant is transported by the transmission lines to the Lianghokou hydroelectric plant, located about 50 kilometers away. There, the energy is combined and added to the electrical grid. And the advantage of the system is that it can balance and compensate for the fluctuations that occur with solar energy, which, of course, since it relies on the sun, is susceptible to variations, including during nighttime and on cloudy days. On the other hand, this project is also very important during droughts, like the one China is currently experiencing. For example, in the dry season, the solar part can produce more electricity, while during the rainy season, the hydroelectric plant can compensate for the solar plant's reduced production. The hybrid plant will save the equivalent of 600,000 tons of conventional coal per year, reducing carbon dioxide emissions by more than 1.6 million tons. So the village basketball and football championships are attracting more and more people in China. On June 11th, the tournament final organized by the Village Basketball Association, or VBA, took place in the small town in Guizhou province. This was China's first professional basketball tournament held in a rural area with, get this, 
2,624 teams competing in over 5,000 matches. The VBA final drew attention of the entire country, and presenting the championship award was Chinese Inner Mongolian basketball legend Mongke Baotur, and the final prize was nothing less than a farm tractor. The championship gained enormous popularity online, attracting more than 300 million viewers and with over 450 million post-game playbacks. Recently, the Ministry of Agriculture and the Rural Affairs and General Administration of Sport of China announced plans to organize a national village basketball championship. And there's another championship that's also growing in popularity, which is the Village Super League. Chuanchou, as it's called in Chinese, takes place between May and July. 20 football teams from Rongjiang County, also in Guizhou Province, participated in the tournament on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. According to the local government, the average game attendance in this Super League has already surpassed 10,000 people, putting it on par with the country's professional league, the Chinese Super League, or the CSL. The CSL, as we've covered in News on China, hasn't been doing so well as of late. Faced with a corruption crisis all the way to the top, in addition to the departure of several international stars during the pandemic period. On Weibo, China's Twitter-like social media platform, hashtags and topics related to the championship received over 200 million views, and several videos of the league received millions of likes on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok. The growing interest in these championships is yet another example of the revival of peasant culture in China, which is part of the government's strategy called rural revitalization. So that's it for today, and just as a note, together with Tricontinental Institute for Social Research, we just published our second issue of our quarterly journal, Wenhua Zhonghang, entitled China's Path from Extreme Poverty to Socialist Modernization. There are some great articles from Chinese thinkers and curated with a Global South audience in mind. Please check it out on our website at dongshengnews.org. And remember to give us a like, share, comment, and please subscribe and activate the bell. Follow us on the usual social media platforms at Dongsheng News. And see you next week. 再见!